Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Today we have with us a Union Minister of Food and Public Distribution, Mr. K.V. Thomas, uh, who's worked very hard on the food security bill uh, these last uh, many months. Uh, and he's uh, with us to explain to us uh, some of the intricate uh, aspects of the food uh, security bill. Uh, welcome to our show, uh, Mr. Thomas. Uh, Give us a broad idea of what is the opposition now saying about the bill. Do we take it that the bill comes to parliament and uh, gets cleared more or less in its present form or do you see foresee amendments uh, to the bill? See, now it is an ordinance. Ordinance contains all the characteristics of the amended bill. And the amendments were made by the standing committee unanimously. Now once the ordinance goes to the parliament, it becomes the property of the parliament. Yeah. And it assumes that, the character of a bill. Yes. So the, the discussions can start. And the government is prepared for discussion always. So once the ordinance comes to the house, let the opposition give us time to discuss. And we are open in mind. And do you uh, expect uh, amendments from the opposition, constructive amendments? Uh, they, can. they can. They can give amendments. Mm -hmm. That is their right. Mm -hmm. But the government will go through each amendment if there is mm -hmm. and take decision on merit. On merit. Okay. Why, why do you think the, the left party and some other parties are so uh, cut up about the fact that you brought an ordinance? Uh, although it is known that the ordinance will be brought to parliament immediately, what is the opposition about? See, you can always criticize on one point or another. What is one criticism? This important decision of the food security was taken in 2009, June 4th. And it was announced by the Rashtrapati in the joint meeting of the parliament. So it's, it's not as if you're doing it before elections or something? It took four and a half years. The very next day, we wrote to the state governments. And ego was constituted under the then finance minister Pranapta. It met eight times. There was NAC under Madam Sonia Gandhi. It met several times. There was EAC constituted prime minister under Dr. Rengarajan. We also made a lot of consultation with the state governments. And after all these consultations, we had the bill, draft bill, which went to the parliament in 12. So it's been a process? Process. It took one year for the standing committee and standing committee's uh, recommendations were unanimous, except CPM one's universal rationing. And we accepted, government accepted almost all the recommendations standing committee. And yes, come in the present form of the bill in last March. But unfortunately, this was not allowed to be discussed. And we have seen two sessions where even the questionnaire hour is not being allowed to be run. It's so quite unfortunate. Because question hour is the property of the mumpers. Yeah. If you are disrupting the question hour, uh, then what about the bills? So can one take it that that you brought an ordinance precisely to get the opposition to come to parliament and discuss it? So it's a strategy to <laughs> get them to come to parliament. <laughs> if you can say, if you feel so, I have an objection. But this is our commitment. Suppose we don't bring this ordinance. And tomorrow you can ask what you are doing. Four and a half years have taken. You have made a commitment in your election manifesto. You have declared to the people of this country through the parliament. What are you doing? So we thought our last option was for ordinance. So we have brought the ordinance. Naturally, the ordinance has to go to the parliament. It has to be discussed. It has to be vetted in the parliament. We know the procedure. And I am confident that the all democratic parties in the country who care about the food, that there should not be anybody having, sleeping with a starving stomach. They will definitely support this ordinance and discussions and get it passed off. They want some ordinance, some amendments which they feel genuine. And if government feels can be accepted, say, let us see what is happening in the parliament. So you, you completely reject the, the opposition charge that this was brought uh, with a view to the impending elections or next year general elections because uh, if anything, you can be accused of uh, delaying it uh, since it's, it's been on for four years. In India, uh, Lok Sabha elections takes every five years. Everybody knows it. And we have taken more than four years for the formulation of this important bill. And nobody will blame us that we have not consulted. We have consulted many a times with everybody concerned. So let us I understand the parliament is uh, being convened on 5th of this, this August. It is going to the end of August. There is enough time. 
and let us discuss this matter in the parliament. Why do you think a UPA ally like NCP, uh, Mr. Sharad Pawar who leads NCP and uh, not an ally but a party which supports UPA from outside uh, that is Samajwadi party, they, they are terming this anti-farmer. Can you explain to us what is, uh, why they are saying it is anti-farmer? NCP and Sharad Pawar is giving full support. I know they they they're uh, giving it full support. They are giving full support mm -hmm. in every state when we are. But equally, they are saying that it may work against farmers. So I have not understood how it is anti-farmer. It is not NCP. That's why I'm asking it you. is not NCP. It is a Samajwadi party said it is anti-farmer. But they should understand one thing. because farmer yeah. gets a price. Yeah, see, only because there is a public distribution system, the FCI, the central agency, procures mm -hmm. and protect the MSP of the farmers. Yeah. Suppose that system is not working, how the interest of the farmers can be protected? So they should also understand only because there is a central procurement agency. Yeah. And there is a central procurement agency because there is a public distribution system. Yeah. And this farmers' interest are being protected, then how can they say that we are against the interest of the farmers? I think Mr. Sharad Pawar's objection stems from this apprehension that if the state procure so much food, food food grains, the private market may get disrupted. There needs to be a robust private market. Do you accept that? Uh, we are procuring only 30% of what we produce. Of the 70, total uh, yeah, market? Yeah, 70% surplus. is the market, open market. Open market. Farmers can keep something with them. The traders can purchase from the farmers, from the open market. We are procuring only 30%. Actually, Charles Pavarji's uh, suggestion was that the agriculture production has to be sustained and enough investment has to be made on which there is no difference of opinion. And that is we all point. know that enough investment has to be made in the agriculture sector whether it's a food security bill or not because agriculture sector has to be strengthened. Yeah. We have to produce more for the people of this country. Second, his opinion itself is that the farmers should get the opportunity of getting the MSP price. So if anywhere farmers are not getting, we should intervene. Yeah. That is the stand he is taking throughout. So, I don't think he is against this law, mm -hmm. this, because he is a part of the enactment of this food security. Sure, sure. And there is also a view that, uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, that, that many states are already supplying uh, food at subsidized rates to uh, nearly 90% of the people, 70, 80, 90%. Uh, Chhattisgarh is doing it, they have also come up with a bill. Tamil Nadu is doing it, Kerala has a fairly robust uh, system. Now. So what this food security bill does is it just converts what is hap already happening into a very legal, uh, legally mandated system, is it? See, the important point is the present PDS system, in whatever forms, is being run in the states. It is only a welfare system. It is not a legal entitlement. So it converts into a legal entitlement. That more than that, when I give to BPL families 35 kilograms of rice, for example, in Kerala, mm -hmm. at the rate of 5 rupees, mm -hmm. no, the states lesser. are not getting 35 kilograms. They give only 20 or 25. Yeah, yeah. And they are not giving it 5 rupees, they are giving it a slightly higher price. Okay. From that stage, mm -hmm. the stipulated number of priority yeah. people in the category mm -hmm. will be getting the stipulated quantity of food grains at the stipulated price. Okay. Right. So states cannot dilute that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Take care. We'll take a small break here. Uh, please don't go away and keep uh, watching RST. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are having a conversation uh, with Mr. K. V. Thomas, Union Minister for Food, uh, uh, Civil Supplies, and Distribution, uh, Public Distribution. So you were talking about the workability uh, of the food security bill, uh, uh, a legally mandated uh, uh, system that, that you're creating. Now, there's some apprehension about whether uh, this will <coughs> be able to, whether, whether this will work <coughs> efficiently as a top-down system, a very centralized system. Now, th there is apprehension that, uh, that something like this, something on such a big scale, must necessarily work in a decentralized way rather than central procurement, transport, rice being transported from Punjab to down south, uh, you know, storage problems, transport problems and the costs thereof. Have you worked out all these logistical issues? Let us look into the practical realities. The 70% of the wheat in the country yeah. is produced in Punjab and Haryana, not anywhere else. And rice? Rice in Andhra and then Orissa. 
Punjab also produces about 40%. Some quantity, no? some quantity. That means the production centers are very few. Very few, okay. So naturally you have to procure, yes. you have to store, you have to transport. Okay. That is what we are doing now. Yeah. The central agency FCI mm -hmm. is procuring the food grains from these producing states. But is there enough investment in storage? I am told it is inadequate storage. We had some problem, but that is getting out of there. It is being sorted out. Because in 2009 10, if you look at the storage capacity, was to the tune of 55 million tons. As of now, my capacity is 78 million tons. Okay, so it has gone up. So gone up. And I have stored 82 million tons last year. Okay. And I will be building another 5 to 10 million tons within another 2 3 years. So that finally, within two, with say 2005 2006, mm -hmm. I would have a capacity of 85 to 90 million tons capacity in the country, okay. and I am modernizing my system because I inherited from British rule okay. many of the godows and cement silos. So these things are being replaced. Replaced. Okay. Replaced. So this process of modernization, replacement, addition of more capacity of infrastructure. Infrastructure is going on different schemes. Yeah. Okay. States are contributing. Uh, state warehouses are contributing. Central warehouses is contributing. Private enterprises are. So these are changing. The whole system is changing. The system is getting. I am not saying it's perfect, yeah. but as a result, what has happened is from 2.5 percent damages, mm -hmm. it has come down to 0.07 percentage. Of the total uh, of total procurement. procurement, storage, and transportation. Okay. I am not crediting about the PDS system. P okay, fine. that is a different one. Mm -hmm. The public distribution system is a quite different one. Mm -hmm. It is with the state hands, yeah. not with us. Mm -hmm. this, still, there is leakages in the PDS system that has been plucked. Yeah. For that, a nine-point program has been sorted out yeah. this is before the state governments, like end-to-end -end computerization, other biometric system, mm -hmm. then uh, social auditing. All these are in the nine points. So, so you're saying that wastage will be minimized. Uh, be minimized in a few years. To minimize. Okay. See, success of this food security bill depends on this on effective storage, transportation, and distribution. At the last point. Last point. The plugging leakages. Yes, plugging leakages. And not uh, losing uh, in transit. Correct. In storage. If we can, if we can have an effective distribution system. If you get an effective procurement, storage and transportation system and leakages are plugged as far as possible, then this system will succeed. It will succeed, yeah. So one more thing I wanted to ask you. The, the food bill, uh, the ordinance as it is now, uh, it's coming to parliament. It seeks to provide food at subsidized uh, rates to 67% of the population, right? Now, in states like Kerala, for instance, already much above 67 percent of the population are getting subsidized food. Now, similarly, Tamil Nadu, similarly, Chhattisgarh. Now, many of these states obviously will not reduce the population covered because of the food security bill. They will have to continue to give uh, the same number of people, uh, right? So, beyond 67 percent, suppose in Kerala, will you? provided on the state's account or uh, I am told that you are not withdrawing subsidized food, food from existing people who may not deserve it as per the criteria which is being evolved. I am told you won't uh, withdraw. So, no, we have taken a decision that when the new food security bill is implemented, yeah. some states like Kerala, Tamil Nadu are getting less than what they are getting now okay. as the priority sector. Okay. So, but we have told them. But the population covered is much more there. Much more than mm -hmm. population covered is even the present. So take Kerala. Yeah. Take Kerala. There is a BPL number. Yeah. But it becomes a priority under the law. Mm. That priority number is, will be much much higher than the BPL number of Kerala. Okay, more higher. But than. they have got APL. They got APL. They have got a special quota. But APL will not be withdrawn. No? Yeah. No, no. So what we have told the state government? Okay, you will be getting a more BPL number. Mm -hmm. But actually, you are APL quantity may be coming down. Yeah. So what we are assured is whatever is there you are off take for the last three years mm -hmm. that will be protected. Mm -hmm. And even now when we see there is a BPL, there is the APL, there is a special APL. Mm -hmm. So this is the way how the food grains are being given to the states. states yeah. Not everything is given under BPL. Yeah. So naturally the states will be provided food grains as per the norms in the priority sector. Above that will be linked to MSP price. Even now it is linked to MSP price. Okay, they, that means they'll have to pay a little more. A little more. That is, but food grains will be available. That means you will use the the socio-economic and caste survey, yeah. which, which is just yeah. being concluded, yeah. to 
to exclude people on the basis of asset uh, ownership? See, that is for the states to do it. States, we are given the inclusion and the exclusion criteria. Okay. Okay. They are on the percentage. Yes. And on the basis of the percentage, even now it is the planning commission who gives the BPL, APL number, right, etc. Right, yeah. On their own criteria. Okay. So here also there is a criteria. And then the states have the liberty mm -hmm. to have, um, the, within the exclusion and within the ex inclusion, they have the liberty to cho choose. Okay. okay. So we leave it to them. So what are you saying is that the states, if they want to... Uh, give subsidized food uh, at a slightly higher uh, price to the APL category or even beyond the APL category, the states can do it out of their budget. That's they, got, they got the enough budget. They got enough. Uh, okay. Even now what is happening, the state of Kerala or state of Tamil Nadu, I am giving BPL rice at 5 rupees. My subsidy is 18 to 19 rupees. Okay, yeah. So I am bearing 18 to 19 rupees, I give it 5 rupees mm -hmm. and state of Kerala have another subsidy of 4 rupees sure. and give it 1 rupee. State of Tamil Nadu have a subsidy of 5 rupees and give it free. The so states will be free to uh, bear... Uh, but major chunk of subsidies with government... Will, will come from the centre. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is provided by so the food bill. Compare the subsidy of the state and the centre. Okay. Our subsidy is more triple than the subsidy of the state. Okay, okay, sure, sure. So we'll take a small uh, break here. Please uh, don't go away and stay with us. Welcome back to State of the Economy. Uh, so you were saying that states will be free to give subsidized food at whatever rate they decide over and above the numbers that need to be supplied uh, subsidized food under the Food Security Bill, right? So, do we understand that in which case overall coverage of population may exceed beyond 67 percent? It could be, it could be 75 percent. States could be have the freedom. States have the freedom. So, so, so naturally it will be but more than 67 percent. Because we are giving 67 percent coverage. Yeah, and the state so so states burden states comes down. Yeah, state burden comes down. Yeah. Already they have got a burden because yeah. schemes are formulated by them. Mm -hmm. But it is actually this burden or the state governments comes down and our burden goes up. So sir, what I am saying is, if you take the numbers covered by food security bill, uh, which will be passed, and the numbers that the states uh, provide subsidize you on their own account at a higher price, together it could be… More than It that. could be what, 70, 75 percent? Naturally, naturally. So really the, now to, to, to meet the needs of say, 75 percent of the population, what sort of uh, stability of food production uh, do you require? Now, that's a very critical question, right? We have calculated all these things. Yeah. We will procure 30 to 32 percent, 30 to 32 percent of what we produce in the country. Sure. So, we have got a projection up to 2040. Okay. So, we will have enough food grains, especially wheat and rice. In absolute terms, it will be what? 65 million tons, 60 million tons? See, what we need is roughly between 62 to 65 million tons for okay. the PDS system. For, 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 for the food security? Food security yeah. of the country. We and need beyond that that you are providing, it may need another 5 million tons? Ma maximum, maximum. Okay. So, uh, so, but so, we will have enough production in the country. Okay. So, so roughly 70 million tons you may need? need. Maximum. 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 To, to cover people under yeah. food security and for the states to give people over and above the food Yeah, yeah. But our food production will be much, much more than that. Much more than that. That has been projected by the Ministry of Agriculture to yeah. 2040. Okay. So on that basis, we have taken this decision of 62 million tons okay. because we procure about 30, 32 million tons. Okay. 32 percentage okay. of what we produce in the country. Earlier, we were procuring only 20, 25 percentage. Sure. Just come to 30, 32 percentage now. Okay. So if we can keep on procuring 30, 32, that will be enough for the public distribution system in the okay. country. Yeah. The remaining is with the uh, traders, the farmers, okay. that 70% they can make use of for their own private trade and other things. Okay. So we have enough food grains in the upper market. Enough food grains, yeah. So, uh, and the agriculture ministry has also talked about investing over 100,000 uh, crore over five years mm. to build infrastructure, agriculture infrastructure, mm. to stabilize uh, food production. Mm. Now, uh, what sort of investment in agriculture infrastructure is the government looking at? See, whether there is a food security bill or not, we have to produce enough food for the people of this country. Yeah. That means we have to make more investment in agriculture. What sort of investment? In irrigation? Irrigation, more better technology, better nutrients, 
uh, better storage mechanism, better procurement mechanism, better harvesting mechanism. Mm -hmm. So all these sectors we have to invest more. That is not because there is a food security bill. But one, one critical thing I wanted to ask you, this issue came up in the Congress party's meeting that they organized last week around this, when they called chief minister. I think it was Rahul Gandhi who said, uh, as reported in newspapers, that uh, that other nutritional value should also be yeah. included in Food Security Act. Now, do you think there could be some Rajiv, amend, amendment uh, to Gandhi, add other nutritional... See, Rajiv Gandhi, what he said is 100% correct. Mm -hmm. uh, rice and wheat are not only the only nutrients. Yeah, be because you have to add more. Yeah. You have to add pulses, edible oil, milk. So is yeah. this amendment possible to include oh, some other... It's not a beginning now. Mm -hmm. Let us at least have the basic availability. Or soya, soya. Uh, uh, basic availability is of food grains, let us make it first. We will definitely go for pulses, edible oil, etc. Even now there is a pro there is a program that is for imported pulses. If states are distributing to the PDS system, they will get 20 rupees per kilogram as a subsidy. If it is imported edible oil, they get 15 rupees per kilogram as a subsidy. So, this is available now to the states, only important. Mm -hmm. But we are thinking, our department is thinking in consultation with the Agriculture Ministry, whether imported pulses or not, whether imported edible oil or not, mm -hmm. whether we will be able to have a scheme mm -hmm. by which subsidized edible oil and, uh, and these pulses mm -hmm. are distributed to the PDS system. But edible oil is not a particularly nutritious. No, no, that's edible oil is something people usually take yeah. as an essential. Probably pulses and maybe soya or something. Soya, all those things are the nutrient components. Nutrient components. Milk, yeah. egg and all Milk those. and egg, yeah. And so, uh, another big debate which, uh, which has arisen because of the bill is how much additional financial burden will the uh, center face. Now, all kinds of figures are, are being uh, touted. Uh, the government says, at most, it will be an additional 35,000 crore, 30,000 crore. The, some opposition uh, party members say it, it could be 1 lakh crore. Some economists are saying it could be 2 lakh crore of additional fu uh, funding requirement. Now, what is, the, what, what is the realistic assessment? See, at present, the existing TPDS system. It's about 95,000 crore, is it? No, 1 lakh 9,000 crores. Okay, In the budget, 90,000 crores have been provided. Okay. That is on the base of 2000 census and 92-93 poverty line. Okay, okay. Now 2011 census is over. Mm -hmm. So as per the 2000 census and 92-93 poverty line, mm -hmm. my subsidy is now mm -hmm. 1 lakh 9000. So how much more yes, will food, my point is food security bill yeah. incur? My point suppose the previous system continues, the present system continues. Then I have to implement by the 2011 census. Sure. My burden will be 1 lakh 13,000 crores. 1 lakh? 13,000 crores. 13,000 crores, okay. Yeah, okay, with the present system country. Yeah. And then we have got the midday meal scheme, okay. the welfare scheme to the children, pregnant women, all these schemes, the child and women's yeah. uh, they That are. costs about another 12,000 crores. Okay. I have integrated all these things. Okay. And then my burden may become about 1 lakh 35,000 crores maximum. So maximum 1 lakh 35,000 crores. Then I am I am giving taking some share mm -hmm. of the transportation and the, then the commission, okay. which is now borne by the consumers. Okay. That also I am taking. The government of India is taking a share of that. So, so, so you are saying it won't be such a big hit on the fiscal deficit? No, no. How can it be? Because already there is a system. Mm -hmm. Already there is a financial burden on the government. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying, we have made it. Another system mm. where all have come in the form of integrated formula. That is all. Thank you, sir, for talking to us. Uh, that's all we have uh, in this uh, episode of uh, State of the Economy. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.